praise the Lord and good evening, our online viewers. My name is Shem Gugi, and I'm saved this evening. And I'm going to take you through our reading tonight. And so our reading this evening comes from the book of Mark, Mark chapter 14, from verse 12 to 26. Mark chapter 14, from verse 12 to 26. And I will read the Lord's Supper. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he went, he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teachers ask, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things that Jesus, just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I? It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to, he said to them, I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount Olives. And this is the word of God. Good evening once again, my brothers and sisters. It's a joy to be here again on this fourth day in the Holy Week when we come to commemorate a Monday Thursday. This is the fourth day, as we call it, Monday Thursday, and let us pray. Father, we thank you for granting us opportunity to once again gather together and to hear from you. We pray that as we hear your word, that it will find room in our hearts to strengthen us and to inspire us, especially in a difficult season like we are in today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, tonight is Monday Thursday. It's the fourth day that Jesus Christ is in the city of Jerusalem. It seemed like on this particular day in the morning, it was a quiet morning. And I'm sure possibly Jesus was reflecting on the events that are going to come within the day the coming night, and also those things that will happen to him come tomorrow, which is a Friday. The word Monday is a Latin word that is command. On this material day, Jesus actually gave the disciples a command that they love one another as he has also loved them. And on this material day, as Jesus reminded his disciples of love and loving one another, he also instituted and commissioned what we call the Eucharist or the final supper. And Jesus told them to continue doing this every single day when they gather together 
as a reminder of the work and the completion of the work of salvation. However, we are living in difficult days. And so the church may not necessarily be giving Holy Communion at the moment, but I hope we all understand the season we are in. I just want to remind us tonight of the number of things that on this material day happened with Jesus. The first thing that the disciples asked Jesus was, where are we going to prepare for our final meal tonight? Just to remind you, the season they are in is a season of the Passover. And on this night, the Passover is the beginning of the final part when the disciples of Jesus Christ would sit with him and share the final meal. And Jesus says, go into the town and you will find someone who will take you to his upper room and there you will be able to prepare. And this just reminds us that Jesus is knowledgeable. Our God knows all that we require for this life. And this story can also be found not only in the Gospel of John, but also in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. And that reminds us that God knows what is required of us. When Jesus gives them a command to go, they found things just as he had said. The second thing that will happen is when Jesus and the disciples were having a meal in that evening, Jesus exposes the scheme of Judas Iscariot together with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. When they were at dinner, Jesus brings out the fact that this night is when he's going to be betrayed into the hands of the wicked or the hands of those who are his enemies. And Jesus, although he says to the disciples that it's one of them, when they all asked him who it is, it is only when he said, the one who will put his hand onto the plot, onto the plate that is going to betray him. And obviously, you know that yesterday, Jesus knew very well that Judas, together with the Pharisees, had a night meeting. And in this particular meeting, Judas was willing to receive a payment of that 30 silver coin, and then he would betray his master to them. Jesus actually exposed this plot, and if you read Matthew 26, verses 20, and even verses 25 to 26, you will see how Jesus brings out this very dark plan that Judas had purpose to execute. The second thing that we see on this night is the enactment, as I have said earlier, of the Holy Communion, the Holy Eucharist. This particular meal, Jesus said, will should and will be celebrated by all his followers and his believers. They would be doing it as a memorial, as a reminder that the bread represents his body and the wine would represent his blood. And these were offered for the purposes of bringing about salvation to man. And so as Jesus in Matthew 26, if you read verses 26 and 27, he says that they should continue. This thing that Jesus did, as I call it, super supper, was given to us as believers so that we may be reminded of the great work of salvation that was fulfilled in Jesus when he died on the cross by offering himself. The third thing that Jesus does on this night is that he speaks to his disciples, yes, for them to love one another, but also to be servants. And so servanthood is encouraged and given prominence by Jesus when Jesus himself takes up a towel, takes up the water, and purposes to wash every disciple's feet that night. 
Remember when he comes to Jesus, when Jesus comes up to Peter, Peter is protesting that his master cannot wash his feet. And remember, Jesus says to Peter, if I do not do this, you will have no part of me. Jesus was doing two things. One, he was showing the importance of being a servant. Yes, you may be a leader, but you must have characteristics of a servant. You must be able to walk with those who need you when they need you. Remember the whole essence of washing the feet just tells you how humble Jesus was. The feet are very dirty. In those days, they didn't have closed shoes like we have today. They walked with sandals in dusty environments. They were sweaty and possibly smelly. And so Jesus opted to wash their feet as a lesson in servanthood. He worked with them. And he says in the end, if I, your master, whom you call so, has done this, you should also go and exercise and do the same. And so when Jesus washes the disciples' dirty feet, he sets up an example for all of us in humble attitude or humility, in becoming a servant or having a spirit of servanthood. It is also an expression of love and care to his disciples. And the results out of that was that they were going to enjoy the opportunity of having a blessed relationship amongst them. Jesus not only exposes the scandalous plan that was put together by one of his disciples, who was Judas, he not only puts together the Holy Communion that he reminds the disciples and all those who are his believers to continue until the day he will come back, he also encourages a spirit of servanthood amongst his followers. And fourthly, when finally Jesus takes the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane, we see how spiritually he prepares not only himself, but also his followers. After supper, we are told by the reading that was read to us that they sang a hymn and they walked out of the upper room to go into the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus needed to spend some time with his father. He needed to talk to him because of the challenge that was going to come in the same night and also the following day. When we see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he tells his disciples to remain behind and pray as he goes to a shorter distance to pray. We are told by the scriptures that Jesus takes prayers three times. And he says the following words. If it is your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. It shows two things. One, that Jesus was human enough to feel the challenge that he was going to face as a person. He knew very well that he was going to offer himself as the ultimate sacrifice. But as a human being, he knew the pain that he was going to be subjected to. And because of all that, the anxiety, the fear, the pressure that he was facing, he hoped that there would be another way. Yet he also secondly accepted that there was a plan that God had for him. And that plan is that he was going to suffer for the sins of the whole of the human race. And that is why he subjects himself to the will of the Father and says, let your will be done. Jesus cries out to the Father and he gives us the example that when we are anxious and worried and fearful and anxious about the things that are bound to come or happen to us, we can cry out to the Father. But at the same time, we must also allow ourselves to fit into the perfect plan of God, our Father. 
we are told by the scriptures that Jesus was also very sorrowful and troubled. No wonder when he went on his knees, we are told also that his sweat turned out to be with drops of blood. How many of us really have had sorrow to the point where the sweat that comes out of you is mixed with blood? This is the kind of agony that we see Jesus go through. The pain, the stress, the magnitude of the burden of sin that the human race had, all of it being laid on this single individual in the person of Jesus. You will notice as he struggled in his prayers, the disciples either because they were physically tired or spiritually they were not alert enough to the challenges that were coming, they were overtaken by sleep. And Jesus three times came to the disciples to wake them up and to ask them to stay with him at least for a short while as they prayed. However, this was not to be. And no wonder he makes the statement the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He knew that the men that he was with, yes, spiritually they may have wanted to stay up, but the flesh required also that they sleep. And so they gave in to the way of the flesh. Brothers and sisters, Jesus gives us that confidence that yes, even in the darkest of the moments, our God will listen to our prayers. Finally, Jesus yielded to, yes, God's perfect will. And it is soon thereafter, and if you read the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 43 through to 51, that when finally Jesus goes to the disciples, Peter, James, and John, and wakes them up and says, time has come. Look, the enemy is at hand. It is time to go. It is when Judas arrives with the palace guard and together with those of the high priest's court, they come and Judas kisses Jesus. And it is at that point that Jesus asked Judas, do you betray the son of man with a kiss? The soldiers did take him. Of course, they took him in the night. They took him and he surrendered willingly he was willing to go. This is our master. This is our savior who surrendered. He had all the powers to refuse to surrender, but he gives his life as a ransom for many. He willingly is taken and he goes to the night court that I call the supreme court of the high priests in the night. They set up a night court that was illegal and the Sanhedrin, that is the leadership of all the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and the scribes under the high priests, they seek to judge Jesus. And finally, if you look at Mark 14 and verses 64, they were ready to have him executed because they said he has blasphemed against the word of God and against God. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, on this night, yes, exposed the scandal that was going to take him into the hands of the enemy by Judas. He commissioned and set up the Holy Eucharist, the final supper for a memorial for us. He also encouraged every one of us to be a servant even though we may have whatever authorities that may be vested upon us, given us a spirit of humility, an expression of love, and in the process of that, creating good harmony amongst people. But he also showed that you can prepare yourself spiritually by finding time to talk to our God and to talk to your Father in heaven. And even at those difficult times, that you can yield fully to the will of God. And finally, Jesus becomes our ultimate sacrifice when he finally surrenders in the hands of the enemy, including when he's judged 
and finally sentenced to death by the high priest and the team that was judging him illegally at night and tomorrow he will be handed over to Pilate who will finally send him to the cross at Calvary. May the Lord help us as we think about this great sacrifice that Jesus gave and willingly gave his life for you and for me. Let us pray. We thank you, Jesus, for willingly giving your life and yielding to the hands of the enemy so that you could finally end up on the cross so that my sins and the sins of all those who believe in you will be forgiven. You shed your precious blood to wash our sins away. We pray that we will open our hearts to accept you as our savior and substitute for our sin so that we may be acceptable in the beloved of God. Hear this, our prayer. In your name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank you for being part of this evening service. We once again want to invite you to share with your gifts and your Easter support. We will appreciate the pay bill is on your screen, pay bill 989-708, and may God bless you as you also bless the work of God. Let us pray. Father, we once again want to thank you and praise you and worship you for these, your servants, as they give from what you have given to them for the ministry and the work of your church. May they also receive abundantly from you. We also pray, almighty God, that those who may be having challenges and issues in their lives today, that, good Lord, you may come specially to meet each one of them at their very points of need. Those who are bereaved, we pray for your comfort and we pray for your peace. We ask that this nation of Kenya will indeed experience your touch of blessing and that you will stay away this scourge, this COVID that has come to ravage the lives and the livelihoods of our people. Hear these our prayers. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you, remain with you, now and always. Amen. If there's anything I can take pride on, is only on the cross of Christ, my Lord.
Shall fall.